Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Dupura Chauhan. I welcome you for another Skillify session today. So today's session is about the cultivation theory. I'll begin with the cultivation theory, uh, but before that, I need to present my screen to all of you. Uh, I hope my screen is visible. Yes. All right. So a very warm welcome to today's uh, special interest discussion that I have for all of you. I'm going to talk about the cultivation theory. But before I do that, I have a simple and a very common question that I have for all of you. So please take a moment and answer this for me. OK, so are you in the process of being conditioned via all the factors that I'll just mention, for example, OTT platforms, Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. So the question says that are you aware? Are you are you aware that are you in the process of being conditioned by these platforms? Yes or no? What do you feel about it? The question is something that you have to ask yourself every day. But right now, I'm just assuming that that uh, and I can see that a lot of people here agree mm. to this very complicated truth that we all are being processed somewhere and somewhere controlled by by uh, by the influence of these platforms. We are greatly influenced and convinced by the social media validation, which promptly constructs and condition our cognitive mind. Let's talk more about it and you'll get an idea about it. So what is this whole cultivation theory about? So this was basically proposed by George Gerbner in 1976. What does it tell about? It basically claims that people who watch a lot of television, I'm sure you all watch television, right? So people who watch a lot of television are likely to cultivate the belief that reality corresponds or walk in parallel with whatever you watch on television. Basically, doesn't it ever happen with you that you're watching a movie and you feel that, yes, this is a reality. It really happens. You keep on questioning that. And while you're questioning, you're also answering that, yes, it happens. They show the right thing. They show the truth. This is what? This is reaffirmation of something that might or might not be true. So here the cultivation theory says that the social media, media or anything that you see around the world, newspapers, news maybe, and even Instagram feed that you have, they all somewhere or in some place cultivate a mindset. All right. So what happens is that he argues, George Gerbner, that what a lot of television changes our perception or maybe strengthens it and uh, of the reality and causes anxiety. How? Because you're watching a reflection of the world, maybe a slice of life. It is somewhere recognizable and yet it is unrecognizable. And when the part that you see is unrecognizable, you start again, you know, wondering about it and get anxious. If you watch crime fiction, if you watch crime thriller, all of these things that you watch every day, if you watch stylized photographs of your friends, of your colleagues, etc., and you start believing that, yes, but is it true? Is it not true? How much is it, is it true is the question. So the point is, everyone, that media does not form, formulate, or create our opinions or beliefs. Rather, it strengthens whatever we believe in how that we will discuss all right moving ahead long-term cumulative exposure what is it now let, let's go back to the time when lockdown started when the whole um, idea of being stuck with your smartphones uh, your laptops your televisions netflix amazon prime etc what happened you started watching a type of series you started watching a type of feed I mean, it's a guilty pleasure, I would say, that all of you on Instagram might be looking for hashtag uh, travelgram, right? So that happens. And then on and on, years after years, let's say months after months, your feed has been created in a certain manner and you're not aware of it. The idea is your mind is processed that it's been two or three months. Let's go out and go for a trip. 
because a lot of your friends, a lot of the people on your feed are going. So this is what you call it, the tailor-made ideas. There are tailor-made, well-suited, already internalized opinions waiting for you in the feed, which you will see and reaffirm or re-strengthen your uh, opinions or your beliefs or your likes or dislikes. This gives you a validated emotion also. How? For example, you love apples. So you, so you keep watching a lot of documentary on uh, apples and it, it really just validates your feelings about apples and then your love for apples will increase on and on. Is this not true? That happened, right? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's in, th those interactions are toxic. It makes you believe that, yes, this is true and everything is happening with everyone. This is the ultimate truth. This is cultivation theory. It cultivates set of rules, okay? Moving further. Now, what impact uh, does it, you know, makes or does it apply? First thing is exaggerated, stylized world. Everyone, I'm sure of it, that you're all on Facebook, you're all on Instagram, Twitter also. So there is an exaggerated uh, reality going on there. Some celebrity might write something and there's a whole troll game all about it. That's, that's, that's where, you know, people start believing that that personality is like that. But that's a surface level reality, isn't it? Something that you only see on a virtual digital platform. So what you see is only a surface level reality. It's just the tip of an iceberg. Is it not true? Next, slice of life. We all, um, we all have this idea and interest that let's watch a television program because it shows reality. It's realism, right? But uh, all those movies that you watch, for example, television, it captures the reality and displays it in a grandiose level. It's not reality. The, the thing is, the truth is, the uh, ultimate consciousness is that that's a whitewashed reality. Something that has been fixated, even the documentaries or even the autobiographies, they are touched upon. So you should not, or, or what happens is that people or us, all of us, we, we take it as it is. But is it? Question. Next is, what happens then? It is the beginning of institutionalizing. It's the beginning of internalizing. What kind of internalization? Internalization of your thoughts that whatever you see on your feed. Have you ever um, observed your feed or you just absorb it? I'm sure that all of us, we just absorb it. We sit at night and we keep on scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And everything that we watch is conditioning us. What is it doing? It is conditioning our mind. It, it is constructing. It is controlling. And at the same time, we are being convinced of whatever we are watching. This is what the cultivation theory says, that these are the impacts. What, happening, what is happening? We are consuming the reinforced ideas. I love apples. And and every that I saw is about apples or any personality, for example, if you're watching, um, uh, watching, uh, you know, some feeds which are related to celebrity who slapped another celebrity, then you will get all kind of information regarding that particular news because they know it that you are watching. Do you remember? That when you're watching Netflix, when you open it, when you log it, uh, log in, then you see that you may also like based on what you watched earlier. So this happens, right? So this is called information junk food. That you just consume everything that is there in front of you. You all the trolls. You escape. You think that you're escaping the escaping through entertainment, but what you're doing to yourself is that you are at the end of it having a tired mind by continuously scrolling. Yes? Last and the most important point is about the impacts that you are not aware of it, but you are living in a filter bubble. It's called the filter bubble effect. I would just ask you all to imagine for a moment, think of yourself sitting in a bubble and you have, you have everything that you like, okay? That you believe in. Your favorite books, your favorite authors, your favorite people. Okay, just assume it, just imagine it for a moment. That bubble, what, what that bubble will do? That bubble will isolate you from anything 
that has some contrasting views or anything that challenges that those people this, those ideas those those concepts those ideologies so is it a good thing or is it a bad thing or is it a neutral thing the idea is that you are living in your own personalized internet experience which which is which is conditioning your mind okay for example i give you i give you same kind of food every day in a variety of manner but it's still the same food you're not being challenged your your taste buds are not improving since you're having one type of meal every day and that is why we need different tastes different spices different ideas that's called chutneyfication of your ideas you need different ideas to have a dynamic and dialectical mind so these are the impact students so i'll just say that uh, on the internet there are some algorithms right and these algorithms they try to predict what you're going to like and predict the information we will be looking for based on our interest and opinions and that way there is a little very little chance of being challenged right because we are likely to be served with what we already like and there is no alternate or challenging viewpoint moving ahead now this is something really very uh, interesting birds of a feather flock together my question to all of you is are we birds yes or no we are not birds right so we need not to be around people with similar same exactly same ideas as we do have how will we be challenged we need challenging ideas we need contrasting ideas we need to be critiqued in order to grow so that's why we need not find feathers of the same color to flock together one thing information that agrees with you is not helping you information that you approve all the time is not helping you grow up it happens that you you become you you get involved in certain kind of a personal internet like i said customized skewed and slanted mindset okay for example whatsapp university we all we, we all are aware of it you have certain forwarded messages and you have you you find people believing it and that that creates overlapping snowballing effects what happens is that you, there is certain kind of polarization what is polarization that you seek out content which approves okay which you approve for example if i you know sit with certain kind of a person and i would keep on you know talking to that person because he or she would always agree with me and there is a polarization that's that's the filter bubble reality and what are the repercussions of that the repercussions are actually really pessimistic because you as a person as an individual or us as a civilization would become like a downward spiral you can see in black a downward spiral is becoming narrower at the very end so what did it uh, what it does it creates mixed minded people very stagnant people very stagnant people very stubborn people with the ideas which are fixed authoritative extremist ideas so who are unwilling to recognize the filter bubble the point here is that we all need to observe that there is a filter bubble and we all need to work on that filter bubble and we need to upgrade ourselves and again transform into an upward spiral uh, uh, spiral uh, where we see that it is broad right broad thinking and open thinking right moving ahead so now this is also very important that why do we need to be open minded so there is this idea uh, that there is epistemological growth epistemology is the formation of knowledge the study of knowledge and the growth of knowledge so the idea is that there is there are three phases for any kind of knowledge or education or idea to uh, to completely formulate itself the first phase is called thesis the second phase is called antithesis and the third phase is called synthesis now this first phase thesis is when for example i i got an idea my ideology has been formulated you can see in the picture so that's a one idea i have one view or an opinion or a belief now i tell this to other people some other people 
or some other person stands up and adds add a contrasting view to that belief okay so that is one plus so the, this is called the antithesis something that is in contrast to what i presented okay and then in the third stage we have synthesis where another person would come conglomerate combine both these idea of thesis and antithesis together and bring a synthesis this is the whole process of knowledge development and imagine yourself sitting in a filter bubble where everything you believe is approved there is no one to correct you there is no one to have a contrasting or challenging view then how will the knowledge be formulated developed etc how will that happen how will we have an epistemological growth if is if if everyone will have their personal internets and they will follow what they want to follow and they would keep on uh, reinforcing their belief and not changing them right moving ahead so the question to all of you here is that have you have you been blocked from any challenging opinion because are you being reaffirmed by everything that you talk about are you having a bad balanced information having a junk information diet this is a question i request you all to ask yourself lastly the solution how can you break this pattern because of course it is uh it is somewhere putting us and our civilization in a dangerous position so what you need to do is switch the snitch snitch is the information sender so who all are informing you who all are giving you information basically instagram so switch it to linkedin or facebook then you should face the book right and twitter i'm not yet sure maybe you can find out something that you could replace or maybe you can just you know filter the feed that you have and then minimize the kind of violence that you see on ott and you can watch some other entertaining prospects so that the only recommendation that you get shouldn't be about let's say let's say crime fiction the second thing that you can do is filter your feed improve clean it uh get 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 yourself into uh, get yourself detoxed right so unfollow the pages which you know reaffirm certain kind of beliefs which makes you internalized which makes you extremist your thoughts extremist so do that and follow something that would you know bring you some kind of a, uh you know something that that has a well rounded educational system okay because uh, all these things uh, have certain effects when you make decisions if you make decision based on already known knowledge that you have based on everything that is say, that is approved by you then that is a huge risk so digital detox is recommended lastly don't buy it don't buy it as in uh, when you see a lot of ads right it advertisement all them not just talking about products i'm also talking about belief system don't buy anything that has been said by anyone on the internet platform or the ott platform or anywhere around you don't live in the filter and don't be convinced super easily by others thought create your own th synthesis right so this is how you break the pattern and you can break your filter bubble or you can um recreate your filter bubble with something that you know gives you or uh, pushes you a nudge uh, towards success towards achievement not something that demotivates you or put you in a position that you are being said or categorized as an extremist any kind of thought that could be you know put you in certain category moving further i come to the summary here i have a i have an example from the book that i read and it was written by michael cogres and roman shapler the idea is the uh, there's an example so i i want you all to listen to me very carefully so that you can get the crux of it so if you like apples and spend hours watching a tv program about peers you won't suddenly prefer peers afterwards but if you already like peers and spend hours watching a program about peers you will like peers even more afterwards so the idea is that you don't need to keep on reaffirming and the idea is to change your taste also give chance to other fruits as well so create a feed which helps you to be successful and not distasteful so today 
as 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 a, as a task you can do and observe your feed that what all you are absorbing and if there is anything that you need to improve filter please do thank you everyone for listening to me and with this i come to the end of today's session thank you <laughs>